I want to run through the numbers for you on the Yahoo Finance Interactive, if you will join me. We'll take a look here. First, let's start with the major averages and what we have seen here. Uh, the Dow up about 19% year to date. The NASDAQ up 22% year to date. But it's the S&P 500 that's been the winner here. It's up 27%, as I mentioned, has hit, has closed at record highs. 70 times over the course of the year, which has been pretty remarkable. What's also been remarkable is that even though this is obviously a pretty large gain for stocks here, and it's um, coming as we have seen now a recovery last year and then this year in stocks. Um, but if you look at other asset classes, we've seen outperformance elsewhere as well. Before we get to that outperformance, do want to mention what we have seen in bonds. Now, you can kind of ignore the percentage gain here because you don't look at a percentage gain in bonds on the yield basis. What we have seen is about a 60 basis point gain in the 10 year this year. That's the largest one year yield gain since 2013. So even though we are finishing the year well below many forecasts for 2% yield, it's still a pretty big move over the course of the year. So that's something to keep in mind. U.S. dollar index up about 6.6% about year to date. This strength as well has been unexpected by many. So that's something that has been important this year. And what's interesting about that gain is that the gain in the dollar usually comes at the expense of oil and other commodities. That hasn't happened this year. Crude oil futures are up some 60% a year to date. So that's been one of the other big winners. And then we got to look at Bitcoin as well. Bitcoin up 63% year to date. So well down off its highs. We know this is a very volatile asset. And some of the other cryptocurrencies have performed even better, much better in some cases of some of the smaller coins. But Bitcoin this year has really been characterized by much broader adoption seemingly, including among institutions. All right, bear with me here, switching on over. Want to take a look at some other themes that we've been watching this year. Here's what's going on yesterday for the sectors within the S&P 500, but we want to switch that on over to year to date. So another interesting thing about this year is, even though we talk a lot about how large cap contributed so very much to the gains over the course of the year, uh, it really has been a broad-based rally in terms of sectors within the, within the S&P 500. And it's not tech that has led the pack on a percentage basis. It's energy. That has been consistent here, along with those oil prices. So the XLE, that's the one on the upper left here, is up 46%. Real estate up 41%. XLK is the tech sector, 34%. But it's the XLC on the bottom, by the way, that includes communication services, quote unquote, which is things like Meta. It's up 16.7% year to date. And then as well, if you look at the NASDAQ heavyweights year to date, you can see, yes, certainly it is a valid point that large cap tech has contributed uh, disproportionately, as it always does, to the rally because of how these stocks are weighted. The largest stocks in the NASDAQ 100 have done remarkably well. Apple, 34 percent. Microsoft, 53 percent. Google, 67 percent. Tesla, 52 percent. Even Amazon, 3.6 percent. Because it's so large, it gives a big gain. NVIDIA, 100 and 27% is what we have seen from that stock for the year to date, which is also just an incredible number. And then finally, this one is for you, Mr. Sazi. Let's take a look at the meme stocks just for fun. You know, we these guys have waned um, in the latter part of the year, but nonetheless, we have still seen some incredible, incredible gains for them. And let's just look at the two tops ones, right? As we are, uh, as we look at the year to date performance, you can see here about more than 12%, uh, 1200%. For AMC, despite coming down quite a bit from its high size, and then GameStop still up more than 700%. So I, that's just touching on all of the many, many things that we've talked about over the course of the year, Saz. Um, But hopefully that hit the, the highs for, for you. Uh, it certainly did, Julia. Uh, you are leaving it all in the field in the final show of the year. That was your most impressive market tour uh, year to date. Very good stuff. I'll just quickly head here. I'm um, looking at deal activity. The data is starting to roll in from Affinitiv. $5.8 trillion in, in deals done this year. That is up 64% year over year, up uh, about the fastest pace since the mid 90s. Uh, deal value up 54% versus uh, 2019, AKA pre pandemic. And this has uh, been a year of really some uh, impressive deals as companies and, and sponsors take advantage of the still cheap money environment. Look, you have uh, Kohl's spending, uh, not Kohl's, Coca Cola spending uh, $5.7 billion 
uh, on sports drink brand Body Armor. You have Amazon buying MGM Studios for about $8.5 billion. And then, oh, yeah, uh, Apollo uh, are now our pairing company buying Yahoo, which is us, for $5 billion uh, <laughs> this year. So there's been a lot of headline grabbing uh, and buzzy deals and a lot of uh, IPO bankers that I talked to, they expect another year. It may not be as strong next year as this year, just given the fact you may see rates uh, increase, thanks to the Federal Reserve. But that front first half of next year, you can see a, a nice upswing in deal activity. Yeah, we're going to talk about um, the IPO pipeline in the second hour of the show today and whether that momentum is indeed set to continue and for how long. Um, but we already have seen some of that momentum rolling over, right? Uh, as we have seen, and this is a theme that we started to talk about yesterday, that really in the waning part of the year here, we have seen all of those sort of hot money, thirsty cash names, whatever you want to call them, from the meme stocks to the new entrance into the market, whether they be SPACs or IPOs, a lot of that momentum has started to cool, even as we've still seen those huge double-digit gains from many of the large cap tech names, the growth names, that long-awaited value over growth didn't quite materialize. Like what's interesting here, Saz, to me is everybody kept talking about, oh, value is going to come, value is going to come. And it has to some extent, right? Financials um, outperformed on the year, but growth didn't underperform either. So it, it wasn't really, it didn't really seem to be an either or situation in 2021. Well, I think what you've seen, Julie, really is a melt up in the markets where everyone sees value. Every single stock, uh, for the most part, looks like a great value. Look at, look at GameStop. You were still running through the charts there. AMC, uh, investors coming into the year apparently saw those as great values. Not so much the past few months, but uh, look, uh, you see money just chasing money out there right now. Yeah, it, it definitely feels that way. And that also means it's been tougher for stock pickers, as we've seen some stories perking up here at the end of the 